If you've ever been ticketed for doing an illegal U-turn to go back to the shot, you might be a photographer. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. It's Mark, the Accidental Geek. I'm here in my man cave in Liberal, and I'm going to give you a little bit, a little bit about selective color. Um, and this is just going to be a basic video, um, just you know, kind of covering the basics of what. Uh, we want to do if we want to use a little bit of uh, selective color in our photographs and I'll show you a couple different ways. Uh, one will be using the camera raw utility and one will be using layer masks in Photoshop and I'm using Photoshop CS5 um, now um, I've, did, I've done a little research I'm, I'm not uh, as familiar with GIMP as I probably should be, <laughs> just because I uh, I'm you know I have Photoshop on my computer, so I don't you know most of my editing is in Photoshop. So, but I do know that uh, in GIMP and GIMP is a great alternative to Photoshop if you don't want to spend any money, um, you can use the uh, layer mask um, method to do selective color. And probably you can do the uh, camera raw utility method too, but uh, the camera raw utility is uh, something different from GIMP. Just like Photoshop and camera raw are two different uh, utilities, um, and and it's the same in in GIMP. You, you use GIMP as the image editor, but you have to use a different utility for your camera raw. Anyway, I'm rambling, so uh, here we go. I'll uh, switch over to screen now. Okay, I think we're rolling. <clears throat> so, let's talk about uh, selective color. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. What was that? Okay, so let's start with a uh, an image. Let Let's start by showing uh, an example of uh, using selective color in the camera raw utility. And I want to use this image right here. Um, and again, this is in Photoshop CS5. Um, right now, I'm in Bridge, and I'm looking at the images um, that I've chosen for this demonstration and uh, this particular image you notice this little uh, icon here means that I've already edited this I've already made changes in the camera raw utility but anyway we're going to open it in camera raw we just right click open in camera raw and here's our image. Oh, wait a minute. That's the wrong one. That's not the one that I wanted. I wanted to use. That's the one that I want to use uh, with the masks. So let's see here. Which one was it that I wanted to use? Hmm. Where is it? Oh, it's here. This one here. Okay, so we'll open this one in Camera Raw. Okay, here we go. So now we're in the Camera Raw utility, and uh, again, you know, I've, I've kind of gone through these uh, basic uh, uh, settings, but let's just go through them again, just so we can kind of little, you know, repetitive <laughs> learning here. Um, this was 
shot during daylight hours, so I'm going to make the change, which changes the temperature and tint in the camera raw utility to adjust for white balance. Um, and I, you know, I just kind of turn the dials and see what it does to the image. Might bring the exposure up a little bit. And again, the recovery is a dial that you use to uh, bring back those uh, highlights that are blown out. You can kind of recover some of the detail by using this recovery dial. And uh, you can use the fill light dial to bring some of the detail back from the shadow areas if you want to do that. So, and, and again, you want to be very subtle in your changes uh, because if you get too crazy with them, you can uh, just make it make it too prominent, make the changes too prominent, and then and then it just it doesn't really work. So any changes you make again, just make them very subtle. I usually turn the contrast up a little bit and give it a little bit clarity and vibrance and saturation just to kind of bump it up just a touch and I could use the uh, curves and mess around with highlights and shadows in there uh, we won't do that I do kind of bump up the sharpening a little bit just to sharpen it up a little bit give it a little bit of noise reduction there now here is where uh, the selective color comes into play in the camera raw utility. So what we're talking about here is going to be the saturation tab. In the hue tab, you're going to be, you know, altering the colors. We don't really want to do that. We want to desaturate in certain areas and and leave, and leave the color in other areas. So we want to use the saturation tab, and you notice the the default settings are right in the middle. So what you can do is you can turn colors either richer or to set to to the left would desaturate that color. So in this particular example, I'm just going to kind of mess around. Let's just start at the bottom here with magentas, and let's let's just turn magentas all the way down to desaturated. And you notice it didn't really make much of a change to the image. Let's do the same with the purples. We're still not really seeing much of a change, so it doesn't really, it's not really affecting us yet. Now with the blues, we are going to see a change. Look at the sky as I turn the blues down. See how the, the blues are going gray there. And the aquas are probably going to be in the sky too. So we'll turn that down. Make that completely desaturated. So now we're starting to see some changes in the image. Now the greens, um, they, I think the, you know, the green grass in this image is kind of partially what I would consider, you know, kind of prominent in the image. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's a focal point, but I I'm I'm wanting to keep the greens in those grasses. So I'm gonna keep the greens where they are, maybe even bump them up up and make them a little bit richer. Um, let's turn down the yellow, see what happens. As we go, you, you notice the limestone is going gray. Okay, and when we turn the oranges down, the limestone's going more gray. Now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, we don't have anything except for the grass, you know. That and you, so you can see how many reds are in this image. Not much, but those oranges and yellows are very prominent. So depending on what you want to do. You know, this is this is where it is originally. I mean, uh, 
you don't necessarily have to, you know, just go black and white in this area and just color in this area. You can, you know, custom build it with maybe a little bit of yellow and a little bit more orange. A little bit ye less yellow, a little bit more orange. And again, we noticed the reds didn't really make much of a difference. But look what happens when we pump the red. Or bring it down. Actually, not much. I think it's those oranges that's going to change the color of the rust in the bucket. Yeah, you see the, the rust in the bucket and some of those uh, orangier colored bricks are going to be uh, affected by the orange dial. So let's turn the reds down. Get those out of the way. So now we're looking at yellows and oranges and greens. Those are really the primary colors in this image. And we can, you know, desaturate or saturate those grasses. I think those grasses look better saturated. And then we can, see now we've already got the skies desaturated. We can bring those skies back a little or a lot. Okay, I'd say we just bring those skies down now. That way we're that way we're bringing the viewer to focus more on where the photograph really is, which is the bricks and the and the uh, rusty objects in the foreground. So you just, you want to kind of find the happy medium there. And that makes for a more interesting shot right there. I say bring those oranges up a little bit. Maybe bring the yellows down a little. Look what happens. When we go too much yellow, that just, that washes it out. But we bring that yellow down and then bring those oranges up. That just gives it more flavor. So that's what I think we want to do with that. So there's a, a little bit of an example of how to mess with colors in the camera raw utility. And I'm going to go ahead and open this image in Photoshop. We're going to save this because I, I, I'm thinking I want to I want to share this. So this is a I'll save this as a TIFF in my print folder. <laughs> Decaying limestone was the names that I was giving him. So I'll make that number nine to file. Oops, I must have already, I must already have a 9. Oh, there's 10. Let's make it 11. There we go. And now I will prepare one for screen output. And I'll make that 72, which automatically in Photoshop you just um, it, it'll automatically resample um, when I change the resolution to 72 which is all I need for screen uh, presentation then it automatically adjusts the uh, width and height for me so I just click OK on that and we'll take a look at that And we'll just save as, and we'll make that, oh, 
I guess I don't have a screen. I didn't make a, a screen folder, make this a JPEG. Okay, the other method <clears throat> for doing selective color, I'll show you real quick, is the, uh, the method of using a, a layer mask. And uh, I think I want to use this image for, this, for that uh, demonstration. So we'll open in Camera Raw. <clears throat> and... I've already made some edits in the camera raw utility and uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and open the image in Photoshop. And this is real simple. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to come down to the layers and we're going to add a, uh, what do you call it? It's uh, called an adjustment layer. We're going to add a, an adjustment layer by clicking this little icon here. And I am going to do black and white with this adjustment layer. And I am going to use the infrared filter on that adjustment layer. Uh, but also I could do a custom uh, job with the uh, with the colors in you notice I can turn the dials and adjust the uh, the, the lightness and, and darkness of the grays just by tweaking the colors usually the green doesn't really make much of a difference cyan certainly does um, I notice when I turn that cyan down, I'm bringing the noise out a little bit, so I don't want to get too crazy with that. I bring the blue down. I can see the noise a little bit too when I bring the blue down, so I'm going to be careful with that one. Magenta is pretty much not, but it's those yellows that really make the difference. Look at that in the brick. So this is going to really be a nice image that will pop. And when I adjust the red, you notice I can see a little bit more detail in those dark bricks uh, right here. So I did that. Okay. So there we go. Now uh, I notice we're kind of washed out here, so let me bring those yellows down, and that makes it a little bit better. Now we're not so much washed out right there. All right, so there's our adjustment layer, and now we are simply going to paint uh, in the layer mask. So we're going to select a paintbrush here, and uh, I've got a right now. I've got a paintbrush that's 400 in pixel, 401 pixels, with about a 45% hardness, which that's that's a good starting point. And we're going to make sure that we are painting with black, and we're just going to start painting. And you notice when I start painting, basically what I'm doing is I am painting the color layer back into this image. So we're going to do that. And I just want this portion of the brick to be in color and the, and the rest to be in black and white. So I'm going to just color this portion of the wall in and you notice I'm trying to stay away from the edges but what I can do 
to get a little bit better on the edges as I can kind of zoom in here. Oops, I want to lose my tools. So, so I zoom in and then go back to my paintbrush. And this time I'll turn the size of the paintbrush down and we'll continue to paint. And you saw there, I got a little bit of the blue sky there, but we'll come back and we'll fix that. I'll show you how. And we'll just kind of continue down here. And we're still painting. And I just want to leave those there like that. I just want this portion of the brick to be in color. And we're going to leave the other part of the brick in black and white. Fill that in. Okay, so now, and this is going to get kind of, we'll zoom in a little bit more. And now what we're going to do is we're going to switch this to white and get back on our paintbrush and this time we'll turn that si the size of that paintbrush down a little bit more so we can get a little bit more detailed maybe even a little bit more okay there we go and we're gonna paint we still have a little bit of a border Okay, this video is probably starting to get long, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to camera and we'll kind of wrap it up. You kind of get the idea, though. Let's kind of zoom out and take a look at where we're at. So, once I finish uh, correcting that blue that I... Uh, painted in that's that is an example of how to do and then you know of course we'll save a tiff file and save a jpeg file for screen okay i'm gonna go back to cam camera Okay, uh, a couple quick things. Um, one is when you do the uh, the layer mask method, uh, one thing you need to do before you save your file is uh, you need to flatten the image, and you can find that in the drop downs. It's it's just click click flatten image. That basically, you know, you've got your you've got your uh, layer mask, and you've got your background. Uh, layers. So if you could save a PSD file if you wanted to maintain that and come back to it later and, and still work with those layers. But if you're ready to uh, output it to a print friendly file or a screen friendly file, you flatten the, flatten the image and then save your TIFF and so forth. The other point I wanted to make is, you know, I, I, I showed you two methods there's many other methods. So anyway, this video is getting long, so thanks for viewing, and I'll see you next time.